Hey beautiful babes, I am so excited to bring this tutorial to you. This has been a highly requested tumbler of mine. I'm going to show you how I do my rose gold marble. I am starting off with a sanded tumbler from Mother Tumbler. In this video, you'll probably see interchangeably a 20 ounce and a 30 ounce tumbler because I actually did two of these for this video. I'll be using a variety of colors from the Glitter Heart Company, including Pearl, Made You Blush, Simplicity, Rosebud, Rose Water, and Autumn Rose. Autumn Rose is the fine XL of Made You Blush, and Sweetheart is another really beautiful fine XL rose gold. They are all from the Glitter Heart Company. When I, when I apply my glitter, I love to use Bright Tone to apply my glitter because I can get some really good blending. Now I like to work on my tumblers from the side and I start at the bottom and I will drag beads of or lines of bright tone up to the top of the tumbler. Now when I do this, my finger is gliding very gently up the up to the top of the tumbler. I'm not dragging my finger. I'm using my finger as kind of like a squeegee, but I'm not pushing all of the product up. I'm kind of letting it even out on its own because I want it to be ha have the same amount of bright tone on the bottom as I have on the top. So if I see any spots that I missed, um, I'll I'll keep moving my finger around until I have all of the all of the tumbler covered. And for my glitter application, I always go in with a thicker than normal coat just for the glitter application only. You want it to dry longer than your normal four hours because this is a thicker than normal coat. I know you probably hear me say that all of the time, but I really want to stress that this is, on, is thicker only for the initial glittering. When I glitter, or when I apply my bright tone, I like to have my, tumble, my turner spinning away from me. But when I go into glitter, I, re, I, I turn the turner so that it is rotating towards me. And that's how I like to glitter. Now you'll see for this tumbler, I'm actually not, um, I did not base paint this tumbler. And that's because um, you can actually use bright tone as your base on your tumbler. This tumbler was sanded but not painted. And it's because of the way that I'm going to be going in with these glitters, you're not gonna see any of that. The other tumbler that I have that you'll probably see in this video was base painted white, but you can, you, you don't have to have a color that matches your glitter 100% of the time. You, you can start with some, you can start with a, a plain stainless base if you would prefer. Now I'm just going in randomly with my glitters. I like to put different cuts next to each other. Oh, and here I'm adding a little bit of champagne toast. That was not in my initial um, uh, initial description of the glitters that I told you about. A lot of the time I like to mix my metallics. So I will do gold in with my rose gold just to give it a little bit of variation. Now I like to do my chunkies next to my fine glitters. I like to do the fine next to a fine XL. It's, I really just wanna get some nice blending in here. And what, if I start off with a fine glitter, what I like to do is go in with a chunky over top of that because now that chunky should be laying virtually flat because of the way we are applying our glitter over that thicker than normal coat of bright tone. Now we wanna keep applying our glitter and blending the glitters into each other until it is soaked into that bright tone and we have full coverage all over this beautiful tumbler. Now, the last part that I like to do is go in with our opals on top of those metallics and those fine glitters because that just adds to the beautiful depth and dimension. And I know you hear me talk a lot about depth and dimension, but that is something that I've always loved to bring into my art, even before I made um, glitter tumblers. So go ahead, just keep layering. There's really no wrong way to do these marbles or milky ways. Just 
you don't want to have too harsh of lines, but that really comes with practice. I mean, the first time that you do a marble or a Milky Way, you're probably going to have some harsher lines. And creating that blend really just takes practice. You just got to keep doing it. And remember, that mix that we have at the bottom of the tumbler there, we want to keep that because this that mix is going to turn into a beautiful custom mix that you can use again. You can use it on a peekaboo. You can put it on um, a different tumbler. You can do another marble with it. Now, what I'm doing right here is I'm going into some of those areas that I need a little bit more fine glitter to kind of soak up into the bright tone, and I am um, hitting that with the, the fine glitter. Now, by now, the bottom of my tumbler probably had a spot or two that was dry. So that's why you see me take my finger and rub it around the bottom to make sure that it is wet in all areas so that the I won't have any patches. So now I'm going to go in with a fine. I don't like to do chunky on the bottom. I like to just do a fine glitter on the bottom so that that way I can keep that rim um, nice, nice and smooth so that we're not having any of those tiny pieces. If we have like a piece of chunky down there at the bottom, see, like I have right there, you just want to kind of move it out of the way so that it doesn't chip. You, you'll see what I'm talking about later when you go to sand. And while your bright tone is still wet, if there's a piece that is being giving you a little bit of trouble, you can just totally take that off. And while your bright tone is still wet, I like to take my tumbler off the turner and gently tap my finger along the top of the glitter to put um to put down any pieces of glitter that may be sticking up. Now this is this will help us cut down on our coats of bright tone because we want our glitter to be flat. We are creating that depth and dimension by adding the opals on top of our metallics and yeah, so that's something that I want to explain because when using Bright Tone for your tumblers, you want your glitter to be flat, but you also want that depth and dimension. You don't want it to just look like not multi-dimensional. I hope that I hope that that makes sense to you. But here is this beautiful glittered tumbler. We are going to save this glitter here at the bottom. I'm going to let this turn overnight. And I'm not going to touch this again until the next day when I go in with our glitter glue. I have let that tumbler dry overnight and now I'm going to go in just to seal with the glitter glue. Honestly, if you wanted to skip this step just for this style of tumbler, you totally could if you feel like your glitter is very flat. The glitter glue will help seal in you help seal your glitter and fill in any of those cracks. But if your glitter is pretty flat, you could just dry brush your tumbler and and go right in with a coat of bright tone. Um, practice, practice, practice will and and you will re you will realize these things on your own the more you make your tumblers. So right now I'm just going in with a coat of glitter glue. You don't wanna have too much gl uh, glue. You just want to have enough to fill in those little nooks and crannies. And the dry time on the glitter glue is two hours. After the two hours, you can go in with your um, coats of bright tone. And also, after one hour, if you if you had chunky glitter and it was giving you an issue and you want to um, smush that glitter down, after one hour, you can take, take this tumbler that you've put glitter glue on, and while that glitter glue is still tacky, you can roll it in parchment paper and then press it with a brayer or um, a credit card or your finger just so that you get all that glitter nice and flat. Now that this baby has dried, I can go in with my first coat of Bright Tone. So I always like to start at the bottom and work my way up. And now remember, for these coats of Bright Tone, it's going to be thinner than that first coat for our glitter application. And keep them thin. Remember that you need four hours minimum dry time in between coats, and your coats of Bright Tone should only be about two pieces of paper thick. You can continue building those coats 
of Bright Tone until your tumbler is starting to look shiny and you want to do a light sand approximately every three to four layers until you feel like your tumbler is nice and smooth and then we can go in with our marbling. The sanding is important because it helps us even out our layers of Bright Tone and I can't give you an exact number of layers because it is going to vary for for your skill level and for um, the person making the art. So I, I could probably get um, it done in about eight layers or or maybe even less when for some somebody else it may take a little bit more. It may take a little bit less. And yeah, it just it just totally depends on your skill level. So I'm just going to say build your layers of bright tone until you feel like your tumbler is nice and smooth. Now for this next part, you can actually have it freshly sanded. You don't have to have um, a fresh coat of bright tone on there. You like so let's say you can go in, do your level sand and then um, after then we'll put a little thin wet layer of bright tone to do our marbling. But right now what I'm doing is I'm taking these little cups from the Dollar Tree and I am mixing in my um, my colorants. So right here I have Bubbly, which is a white mica powder from the Glitter Heart Company. I also used Champagne Liquid Mica, which are the liquid mica metallics from the Crystal Act Company. That was in the first cup. And in the third cup, I am doing Smokestack, which is one of my favorite mica powders from the Glitter Heart Company. And then I'll be doing, um, taking a little bit of the white acrylic paint and putting that in the middle cup along with that white um, bubbly mica powder from the Glitter Heart Company. And I'll be mixing each one excuse me, each one of these with a little bit of bright tone. And this is what we are going to be using to marble our tumbler with. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that you can see me mix, mix, mix these together. And then I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right, now that those are nice and mixed, we are going to go in and put a very thin coat of Bright Tone on top of this tumbler so that um, we have something, so that our, once we start marbling or doing our Milky Way, whatever you want to call it, the, the colors will just run together and create that beautiful marbling type look. Now I like to use the tongue depressors that you that you see here or the, the little wooden sticks, whatever you want to call them. And I will take those and I will start to drag my colors on the tumbler in the direction that the glitters are going. So here I like to change the direction now so that the tumbler is um, rotating towards me. So now this helps me um, get the colors going in the direction of that glitter. I'm going in first with that champagne liquid metallic mixed with a little bit of bright tone. Uh, just, just start going with it. You don't want to apply too much at first because you don't want them dripping down the sides of the tumblers, of the tumbler. You want it to go nice in the direction of the glitter and just flow naturally. So just start with a little. And you know what, this part is so easy peasy because if you mess up a little bit, it's so easy to just go in with your finger, swipe some of it up. If you don't like it at all, you can just, honestly at any step of the tumbler, if whatever, if, if your bright tone is still wet, you can just rinse it off. But we're gonna try to avoid that for right now. So I like to go in with the colors right next to each other so that they can start blending. So I'll go like on top of the champagne. I also like to start making those little tiny veins because when you think about a marble, it has the natural veining. All right, so we're gonna go off of some of our bigger pieces and create some smaller pieces uh, or some smaller strands of that veining as well. And uh, another trick that you can do is you can take a straw and you can blow these down and, and around, but you don't want it to drip 
go, drip going down the tumbler, if that makes sense. You don't want to have so much where it's cr- uh, causing those drip marks. You want these natural veins. You want this to look natural. All right, so I'm going to keep doing those, and I'm just going to go ahead and stop talking and put on some music for you all so that you can watch this. And now, once you have your marbling the way that you love it, then you can just go ahead and start doing your coats of bright tone after this dries for four hours. And just keep going until your tumbler is nice and smooth and shiny and the way you want it. Now, I finished this off. This was a gift for my girl Kelly um, over at Dixie Darlins. She's an amazing artist. And as you can tell, I started this before Christmas time um, because I have my my nutcracker there in the background. But I finished this off by taking some vinyl in a color that matched closely to my tumbler and the rhinestones that I was going to be using. And I bedazzled this baby using liquid fusion and some rhinestones. And Kelly is a big Alabama fan, so I had to put um, the A for Alabama on here, and I also put the Roll Tide on the other side. This is just a way that you can embellish and finish off your tumblers to give it that little extra, extra pizzazz. I'm always encouraging you all to think outside of the box, and I really hope that you like how this came together. Let me know what you think and if you're going to be making one of these for yourself because I would love to see it. As always, make sure to follow and like and subscribe and all of that great jazz if you want to see more epoxy-free Tumblr tutorials. And a big thank you to all of the babes in my creative community because they push me to do better and they just push me to keep going. I love what we've created in that amazing group.